Good day, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live classical music channel. I'm Anna Spinskaya and I'm streaming to you from Washington, D.C. suburb. We are here to connect musicians and audiences in real-time performances and music news now from around the globe. We want to empower musicians with new tools, enrich with new thinking, expand horizons of what's possible, what can work, and what can be a source of joy and success for modern performing artists, introducing Sounders Perceiver International Competition. Freedom and liberties. As artists and teachers, we want them. Now that Sound as Perceiver has provided the stage for liberties and freedoms, how to make the best of the opportunities. And today we are very honored to present a guest pianist, Mika Yui, who is a member of the Sound as Perceiver Advisory Board and panel of the international judges. Mika, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this program. Hello, Thank you Anna. For joining it's us. wonderful to be back. I can't believe it's been a year. <laughs> yes. It's been more than a year since we started and uh, thank you so much for coming on board with answers which uh, a lot of people are looking for. Oh, it's my pleasure. Okay, can I hit the ground running? Please. And <laughs> um, Sound as Perceiver offers musicians a virtual stage with uh, lots of conditions which are unconditional. And this is new, this is unusual and a lot of people are asking us questions. How do we manage what you offer? Let's start with a no time limit for performance. Let me just quickly say what that means in the sound is perceived. In the semifinals and finals rounds, uh, contestants can play as long as they want or as short as they want. They will not be stopped. Now, Mika, to you, please help the teachers and contestants prepare for that. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say that, I mean, Anna, you know how excited I was to come here today to promote Sound is Percivo. I I'm so enthusiastic about what you created. I believe in it. I think it's very difficult to verbalize all the wonderful benefits that uh, um, the musicians can get from this competition, uh, which is actually a very limiting word for what Sound is Perceival offers. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. I think, you know, musicians, we have a little bit of a difficult time accepting this concept of freedom and no limits and no repertoire restrictions and i think we've gotten accustomed to you know being told exactly what we should be playing and uh, i think sound as Percival is very unique in the sense that um, students and teachers both are i think it throws them back a little bit you know to be offered. exactly we're so used to being restricted and complaining about it now that that's what the sound is perceived is um we, it's created by community of musicians by talking and listening to established teachers with many many students and many years of experience what do we as musicians want we want freedom Yes, we it. do. Yes, we do. And, you know, I think what's really unusual about Sound as Percivo is that it really gives students and teachers a platform to really dig deep and really figure out who they are as musicians, what music is moving them, what would they like to present. And they, they really have to come from the place of who they are and what they want and not about what they want to feed the judges or you know, what they must play. It's about what they want to play. And mm -hmm. I think that's just the best way that um, these students can present themselves. I'm but sorry, that can be yeah. really challenging because like you said, we're mm -hmm. so used to quite the opposite, fitting ourselves yes. into some preset criteria, which may be 70 or 100 years old. Mm -hmm. Some competitions are that old and mm -hmm. um, trying to please um, the judges or, you know, everyone around uh, with fitting into that criteria. So mm -hmm. how do you suggest for people to approach the freedom? So I think there are just so many possibilities. You know, I think you can have 
a young virtuoso who just has fantastic technical facility and that's just what they're best at and you know they want to come and play Paganini Caprices or it could be list etudes or whatever because that's just what they excel at and that that's what they're really good at you know there might be you know other kind of contestants who you know they really want to put together a thoughtful program that makes sense programmatically and be creative in that way those are some options um uh, and then, you know, we have these different levels of contestants too. So you may, you may just have a, a contestant who might want to just challenge themselves and just try out something, you know, in this live format. The options are, it's just endless. And I think people should not be afraid of presenting anything that f they feel like they want to try out or they want to be creative with. This is the platform to just really be creative. Anything is possible. And it, yeah. Exactly. And um, <laughs> from last year's experience, it was absolutely heartwarming to watch the judges really look at the at that aspect, to really approach the, the contestant from on their own terms, mm -hmm. whether they present a virtuosic repertoire or miniature repertoire or something else, and really see through the, the presentation to what it is the person is trying to, the message, what they're trying to say with it. Well, you know, we all know, you know, doing any kind of competition that you cannot please everybody. Not everybody is going to like you. So I think that whoever is um, participating in Sound Dispersivo needs to get that thought out of their head. That should not be their focus because, um, you know, everybody has different tastes. And so, but ultimately, I think what moves the musician um, themselves, that will translate into what they're communicating. And I think um, whether it's the judges or the audiences, audiences watching, I think as humans, we connect to whatever it is that, that you are moved by. Yeah, that's such a good point. Be true to yourself and then the audience will see the genuinity of Absolutely. your performance. And that's the focus of the competition to discover that genuinity. Um, maybe we can uh, watch a short clip from um, one of the last year's presentations so people who are watching our program can really understand what, what it feels like to be in the semifinals or final round of the Sound Espresso competition. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can put it up. Try to keep your back more straight. It's going to help you playing. Your power, it's going to be uh, quadrupled just by your, posi by, by your posture. Now for the Chopin, definitely well done. I would be careful with the quick passages. And generally speaking, I'll be careful not to rush it. To me, it sounded a bit on the rush side. I know it's presto. I, I, I know it goes all over the place. Uh, but I, I may slow down it just a tad bit. I would personally could use a bit, a bit more difference of uh, dynamics in the soft passages, so that your big ones sound bigger. But otherwise, it's it, it's it's wonderful. Congratulations to you and your teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. How you emerged uh, to the music, it's amazing. It's what I love the most. Uh, for me, uh, it was a nice competition. It was like very nice uh, uh, concert or, uh, you know, recital. Yeah. So th mm -hmm. thanks for that and fantastic. Well done. So <laughs> you yeah. can please comment on that. <laughs> yes, actually, three things came to my mind. I remember Artem, very impressive. Number one, I mean, obviously the music he was playing was impressive, but I think even in that short clip, we felt the, the commitment to the music, how he was so 
he, he really felt the music and the, we felt the intensity just in that short clip. That's my first thought. Second thought I had was, wow, the sound was so great. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I think he was at home and I cannot stress the, just the wonderful sound platform that Sound Dispersivo has created. I mean, it's really thanks to you guys and all your um, tech guys, your sound engineers who help create that amazing sound. But I think Artem also followed all the instructions that are listed in the applications. He did all the right things, simple things, but it really maximized the sound quality. So I hope people don't, you know, ignore that. Number three, just, you know, stressing that, you know, um, judges' comments, it's all very subjective. And I think it's important that um, whoever is playing is just filing those comments. You know, it's not, it's not a criticism. It's just an opinion, and uh, you can take it, you can leave it. But I think any information you can get is extremely beneficial. Um, and uh, yeah, this yeah. this is not instruction. This is suggestion, no. and this is adding value and add, adding some um, feed for thought. Mm -hmm. be, uh, Food for thought, basically. Absolutely. And uh, I want to also point out that in this short clip, we saw a brief um, comments from a pianist yes. and from the opera singer. And um, who was the third judge? Was it um, uh, cellist? It was cellist, yep. Cellist. Cellist. So, and uh, for a pianist contestant, this is really, I think, very important to those angles, different angles, because, yeah, Artem is still a student, of course. He has a teacher and he's developing his technique and everything involved with learning the instrument. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, years from now, um, the conductors, the cellists, the opera singers are going to be his colleagues and collaborators. Mm -hmm. It's probably just as important to understand the feedback and how... Um, representatives of these different other instruments per perceive you and as an artist what do you think yes yeah i mean just to get the perspective from different musicians i mean music is music you know yes. and as a pianist you can be very very specific and technical about you know one's comments but i think as a musician you know it's just it's music you know it doesn't matter if it's piano music or string music vocal music mm -hmm. um and uh yeah, and everybody feels things in a different way, but I think everybody clearly enjoyed that performance regardless of, you know, what instrument, you know, you played as a judge. So, um, yeah. We also get a lot of questions from, um, especially contestants and sometimes mm -hmm. parents and teachers too. Okay, this is all fine and great, but still competition is competition. So we would still like to understand uh, the judging process, the criteria, and how we can ma maximize basically our chances of winning because Sound Espresso is offering really a lot of opportunities and prizes and scholarships. And uh, these are very attractive. People really, I understand the practical side of it. Okay, this is all great and fine, but I want to win. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to stand a chance to win. So you've been through... Um, many sessions with other judges um, behind those magic uh, virtual doors in a private virtual deliberation room. Mm -hmm. So you, it's very important for people to hear and understand what, what to expect. How, how like is the this, judging? I like this banner, <laughs> mysterious virtual doors. <laughs> you know, it's just um, it's just a group of musicians who have different opinions some similar some a little bit different and we come to some kind of consent consensus on that particular day and time of what we preferred having said that you know on a sound is for Sivo, it's it's so different because the so-called prizes they're not conventional prizes mm -hmm. and so i call it the gift that keeps giving um you know, the, the prizes that were given out last year wasn't necessarily the first prize or second prize winners. It's and the actually the prizes are all very, very educational. Um, it's I think, yeah, things prizes were given to some semifinalists, not necessarily mm -hmm. even finalists. Um, I can't stress the fact that you just just do what moves you present what you feel strongly about present what you excel at what you feel you excel at and i think you just have to start from that point 
And, you know, and what ends up happening in the judges room, it's, it's just out of your control. But I think that whoever participates will be surprised about what they get out of it. And it's not just like, you know, you play in the finals and results are out and that's done. I mean, sound is perceivable will be in your life for a very <laughs> long time. And honestly, I think just like there are so many experiences through doing this competition that you know, it feels like a prize. I mean, just learning about the technology and the sound video, it's a live experience. You will be surprised at how live it feels, you know, bringing the world together, the fact that you're reaching out to so many people just around the world and you never know who will watch your performance and listen to you. And it's a, it's a real career enhancer. You know, it's not just a one-time shot. Um, the interviews that the students give, um, and not just one interview. I think some were interviewed a year later. And yes. yeah, we follow. Like you said, Sound is Pursue intends to be in the contestants' life for a long stretch. You will never get rid of them. <laughs> you will never get rid of us. That's for sure. Yeah. We ask them for updates. We ask them to come back to, to the interview and tell us what's happening in their life, how they developing their education, their career and everything yes exactly a year later and then two years later and hopefully for many years later as well yeah i don't i just don't think it's as simple as first prize second prize third prize i mean the prizes show up in so many ways and so many unexpected ways too and mm -hmm. you know i just feel like it's unfortunately it's called a competition but really it's i think this sound as perceivable has so much heart and i really believe that um there's just uh, so much care for the contestants and the and the musicians and I think that's very very unusual it's not some kind of money-making business it's not about prestige it's really about caring about the development of the artist um, and again just continue it continually mm -hmm. so yeah I think that's really special yeah and thank you Mika for pointing that out as a member of the um board of advisory you're one of the people who are shaping that attitude and keeping this focus of sound as perceived to be contestant student centered to really focus everything that we do including of course promoting and networking and all of that but still all are uh, keeping all of that focused towards supporting the young musicians yes well i'm supporting what the the founders philosophy is and it just happens to align with mine so i really i like that it's not cutthroat and it's not about um you know putting this kid on a pedestal and just getting rid of this student and it's just it just it's cares overall cares about you know all musicians so mm -hmm. yeah. people people also ask us concrete questions mm -hmm. specific okay majority of the competitions today employ a scoring system now, the, the judges' panels um, have a freedom. The competition is about liberties and freedoms. Uh, we don't impose a scoring system, but we don't eliminate it either. So each panel of the judges kind of decides on how the deliberation process goes, and it's private. Um, if the panel wants to share it, they can. But if there is anything you can share from the back end of the <laughs> judging room, um, I think p people would appreciate it very much. <laughs> So it was a year ago. I think there was a number system, I think. So, um, you know, we did score the, the students. Um, and, you know, surprisingly, generally, it worked out. It, um, you know, unless there was some real co controversy. There was no controversy, but, you know, some, something we had to really discuss. We talked it out, and it, it all went very smoothly. There were no... Yeah. Some deliberations I remember were quite long and uh, we were holding up the, the audience for quite some time before the judges finally signaled us, okay, we're done, we're ready with the results. Well, <laughs> again, we because of this it. platform you created, I mean, all these judges from around the world, we were back there and we were enjoying discussing the performances and we had, I think we had forgotten that the world was waiting for the <laughs> results. So we apologize for that. <laughs> so, but the, the the, the, the length of time sometimes the it took panels to discuss was mm -hmm. um, was it more because 
there were, you know, disagreements or was it more because there was a lot to discuss and then later relate? To you get a students? bunch of musicians together. I think, you know, we enjoy discussing and everything. We just, you know, we have to apologize. We'll, we'll try to limit the deliberation oh, time. <laughs> we have but it, it was all very, very cordial. Like I said, I think, you know, the judges are all wonderful musicians and, um, you know, I think everybody has very good taste. And so, yes. you know, I think it, it worked very smoothly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's show one more clip from last year's judging um, and just to show people the experience. I love your poise in the opening theme. A thing that maybe you might think about in the future is keeping your first finger down more when you're playing the passage work. But everything was so beautiful, very clean and poised. Brava, congratulations. Keep growing. Keep finding a little more creativity in your music so that the phrases are a little more exciting. And you can have more contrast between what is uh, bubbly and happy and what is really lyrical. When you're doing the performance, it's not that you should look to the camera, but I felt like you were just a little away from us being able to see all of your intention. I would like you to enjoy your own performance a little bit more, have some more fun with it. We are communicating in performance the music, your story, and I'd like to hear more about from you about your playing. But bravo, beautifully done. So if you can please comment on this oh, a little bit. Well, isn't that amazing? She was in Korea, right? Yes, she I mean, was. That's just fantastic. 14 hours time difference. <laughs> amazing. And judges from all different places. You know, the uh, comments are always positive. And, you know, the other thing is that as uh, the judges, you know, we're all professionals and we know what it feels like for these contestants to be playing live and, you know, in this, in this format. So um, I think everyone has to understand that... Um, you know, it's, we're just, we're all on your side. Like we, we understand the experience and, um, yeah. And like the I courage said, it takes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, we're all extremely, um, uh, aware of that and everybody's always positive, you know, whatever comments we're giving are just, you know, little things that we might have noticed that might help you and you can take it or leave it. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it's, it's all, I think, a very positive experience. I don't, and I think you'd be, everyone's going to be surprised about what they actually get out of it. It'll be more than what you end up just reading on the website or that application form or whatever. It's just indescribable. So. Thank you, Mika. Um, we are sort of coming towards the end of our program, but I wanted to, um, Open, open um, our platform to anything, any comments, any suggestions, anything you would like to add to what we discussed already. If we forgot something, please bring it up. Well, you know, I know that you have so much footage that you would you can sift through to find different kinds of contestants. Um, I think the examples you showed were, you know, a specific kind of performance, but I distinctly remember a very young man, a pianist, playing some of his own music, incorporating yeah. that, and actually programming it um, very cleverly with, um, uh, you know, some other composer. Um, we've had like really young kids, you know, who wanted just the experience 
of trying something like this um, live. So I think, you know, that was very impressive what you showed, but um, I just don't want people to think that that's just the typical. I mean, there's just so much variety um, and capabilities of, of just so many options of what um, just ages. I mean, I know the age range is vast um, and uh, it's really it's really open, but it doesn't mean that it's sacrificing on quality. Um, it's just um, it's varied. Um, I don't think it should be cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a very important point, and thank you for bringing this up. Um, we do get asked questions. Okay, who would be the the best person to benefit from uh, the sound as perceiver? And uh, because it's designed as a evolving process, evolving uh, experience, there is a um, there is a part of it which is beneficial to any age, any stage, and any, any level of development, because uh, contestants are going through. Steps of the process from tech checks with our producers they learn a lot about what proper technology for music and how to operate it how to prepare it and um, they can take that into their future study into their um, online attendance of various other events and then um, how to behave on stage how to stay within the form how to not fall out of the frame you know how to prepare your room how to communicate on on camera so all of that is a learning process even before they step on the stage and then um the experience with the stage itself and being prepared for technology maybe sometimes not working the way you want it to work and what will happen for instance i remember distinctly there were a few contestants um where our producers always give an instruction that okay if something happens to your tag don't freak out Nothing will happen. We'll take you off and will you bring you back on. You'll have another chance to perform your entire program. And a few people had to um, utilize that mm -hmm. advice because something did happen. Like lights went off. Someone had a storm which knocked off electricity in there. Mm -hmm. So there were, there were some things, not a lot, but a few things happened. And being prepared for um, something happening in, on, in this format of the stage, going through that experience or seeing someone go through that experience um it's um even for a five-year-old it's it's a cool experience it is and i mean what people don't know even just me simply coming on stage today i mean you know you had to fix the the, the uh, quality of my sound and the, just the right lighting and um there's so much um support um backstage um that you know that you all want to maximize the experience for the contestants. I do want to bring up the fact that, you know, the fact that this competition is free, you know, it's just open to all, it sounds like to anybody and any, any kind of programming, there is quality control, right? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, I know that already this year, you know, you've eliminated already a bunch of people in the preliminaries, you know, quality, it's just that it doesn't have anything to do with age. It doesn't have to do with you know where you are in your the stage in your musical career. I think quality is something that it's not specific, but I think mm -hmm. you know as we we know we know what is really good. Yeah, the dedication to the quality shows up shows even in the simplest presentation of the simplest pieces by the youngest contestants. That's right. And I remember last year there were some very young contestants who were chosen for the semifinals and even finals and they didn't play list rhapsodies no. and that wasn't the point the point was that they were focused on really polishing their expressiveness through simple pieces which were appropriate for their stage and development and age but they were dedicated to every note of those performances to really communicate in a polished and clear way mm -hmm. yeah. to, to the audience and that's probably outlines a little bit of the, the quality control you're talking about Mika yeah, right it, yeah absolutely and you know even if you're young you know there there are young people who you could tell are really connected to the music I mean frankly there's just so much talent out there young talent mm -hmm. you know so um, I just I don't would not be concerned about bringing kind of cookie cutter, you know, same pieces that everybody else plays. That's great if you want to, no, no problem. You know, if that's what you really are moved by and if you feel like that's what you excel in. But um, 
Yeah, just variety. Explore I, beyond <laughs> the, the the boxed in thinking, um, because that's in some ways perceive that outside the box thought process and approach is really welcome. Yeah, in a in a genuine, mm-hmm. sincere way, and I think the older contestants maybe they're able to really explore that more. The young students might you know need their teachers guidance to go through that um but definitely it's a it's a starting point to start thinking like that um think about what kind of artist they want to become even mm-hmm. when you're young yeah so. absolutely mika this was a tremendously enjoyable and for me educational too because oh. uh, you know I, i'm in the everyday process of doing this and that for the competition and uh, you have this um the overview bird's view of it which is always very very helpful to hear oh shout out to you anna really <laughs> i mean thank you for creating something like this for you know our young people i i just really hope they all take advantage of what you've created i i believe i'm a b- big believer and supporter on what you do so thank you thank you thank you very <laughs> much yeah and uh, so just perceive definitely benefits a lot from your advice and from your thinking about it and uh, talking with more colleagues and probing okay what if we do this how would that benefit the young musicians and their teachers how we can support even more and better um because we we are all in it together <laughs> Absolutely. Helping each other is the way to go. Thank you. Yeah. Mika, thank you so much for taking time and coming on the program today. We hope very much it was helpful and um, shed some light on some common questions about Sandra's Perceiva. And uh, we want to also thank very much our audience for being with us today. Um, thank you, Virtual Concert Hall's team of uh, technical crews and pr- producers and a special thanks to Ante Božić Kudrić, who is a pianist and the composer and the director of today's show. By his magic fingers, you were able to see all those clips and changes of the screen, and we were able, me and Mika, we were both able to keep our hands free. <laughs> Thank you. And our thoughts focused on what we actually want to say instead of pushing the buttons around, right? Yes. And um, many thanks to all the sponsors of the prizes and uh, to the History of Music Facebook channel for supporting our programming and bringing it to wider audience. And uh, with this, we're going to say goodbye to everyone. Mika, thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Bye. Bye. No matter where you are or who you are, music connects us all. We started with a dream, but now we are paving the future. Welcome to the Sound Espressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage.